on this Ed's Up. It's all about Newfoundland. Ah! F and fishing. Ah. And Newfoundland. <laughs> and fishing. Holy sh! It's happening again. And Newfoundland. Yes, sir. Oh, God. I'm Ed Robertson. I have a dream job. I'm in a rock band called Bare Naked Ladies. I get to travel around the world doing what I love. Someone thought it'd be a good idea for me to fly around and try some of the toughest jobs out there. I don't know where I'll be going, who I'll be meeting, or what I'll be doing. But I've got a pretty good idea. It won't be easy. My coordinates today have led me to the southern coast of Newfoundland. Absolutely gorgeous. All these uh, little remote fishing villages that are, uh, you know, many of them only serviced by boat. It is just stunning to be down here. Newfoundland was its own country until 1949. Couple that with the isolation of an island, you know you're in for a completely unique adventure. I'm landing on a quiet little strip in the middle of nowhere. That is one hell of a runway. <laughs> it's the best we got. We Holy land on it all the time. Holy smokes, I'm welcome glad. To, welcome to Newfoundland. Okay, welcome to Newfoundland. We're eh? going to put you to work. Boyd Pack is a businessman in the fishing industry. He wants to show me a traditional Newfoundland job, and it starts in the coastal town of Hermitage. Couldn't get cell reception. Don't really care, because I met up with Boyd Pack again, and uh, he says he found some folks I can go fishing with. Darlene, yes, this is Ed Robertson. Uh, Hi, Darlene. He wants to be your deck man today. Great. We're going to do some fishing? We're going to do some air fishing. We're going to make you work. Okay, I can do that. Oh, it's not fishing with a rod, it's fishing with nets. So okay. It's hard work. We own operate our own fishing enterprise. She's been with, I've been at it for 22 years. Darlene's been at it for the last two years with me. And we, we go out to all species, from lobster to redfish to cod, whatever we can get at. Ideally, what are we looking for? Is cod the best thing uh, to catch? Cod is the best price fish. The majority of fish you're going to get now is probably called redfish. Ocean perch. Ocean perch, right. Those the ones with the crazy eyes. Yeah, and the uh, and spurs. you got to watch the spurs. When you play on the lake, you got to watch the spurs. They're dangerous. Uh, you know, I know a guy who's got gold meat in their hands and lost feeling in their hands and can't work. Wow. It's good to know as a guitar player. And it's a dangerous job. More people are killed working on fishing boats than in any other job in North America. You're going to be back on the stern of the boat with Darlene. Main thing back there... When the net is aboard, wash your feet. You don't want to get it caught you in You don't want to get your feet in the net, because if you do, you're going back over that black piece right there. But this boat won't stop fast enough to keep you aboard. Jeff and Darlene are retrieving their gill nets, which were set adrift days ago. For me to be a good deckhand, I have to clear these nets of fish fast. The more nets we clear today, the more money Jeff and Darlene take home. Take the fish right by the hose. Okay. Pull the mouth open and get the twine out of the mouth. Something tells me they just made that look easy. There you go. Ah, oh, this guy's huge. And his eyes are friggin' giant. And then he should just pull out. I hope you're not going to have to help me with every fish, darling. Am I doing this right? This is way harder than it looks. I cannot figure out how to get this fish out of this net. If I grabbed it from the right side, from the no, other side of the net? No, no. no. It's always got to come through the net. come through. Finally, a big money cod. Our first cod. How the hell are you supposed to get this net <laughs> off? I'm trying. <laughs> I don't get it. Pulls the mouth open, pulls the net out, slips it through. That's all there is to it. Yeah, but see now, look what's going to be on my side. A giant big one. Big one. Come on, you got to get this one. This is a live one. Clear it all the way from the mouth, clear it off. Jeff Stair tells me I'm way too slow. Time is money, even on a small fishing boat. They're picking up. There we go. So far, it's been slimy, wet, cold work, and Jeff and Darlene are doing most of it. I think I'm just slowing things down. Here comes another complete failure. That's got happen. Finally, we've cleared this net. It's time to send it back into the ocean. Set the net back okay, again, let's yeah? go. Okay, let's okay. go. Throw it. Here goes. Steaming ahead in the boat, and if any part of me gets caught in this net, 
I get dragged overboard with the net. I'm not built for that. Woo! Here we go! One, ready, two, three! Ready. Woo! Oh my goodness! Nice yeah. work! Holy <laughs> smokes! That was a little bit harrowing for a moment there. And where do I grab it? Having just finished with one net, time to pull in another. Oh, yeah. You guys have probably figured out pretty quick. If you want to get things done quickly, bring a city boy who's in a rock yes, band out on the right. boat. I feel bad for taking so long on the first net. I'm going to work faster on this one. But working faster has its drawbacks. Ah! That's him, Your Honor. The one with the bulgy eyes. That's the bastard that stabbed me. After four hours of hauling nets and a couple hundred pounds of fish, I'm only marginally better at this. We're heading back to Hermitage, and I get an interesting offer. Do you want to jump in my pants now for dress the fish? Because if Your not, you're going to be rubber pants. <laughs> <laughs> my rubber pants. I don't pants, know. I'm on another me? man's boat, and his wife just asked me to jump into her pants. Have fun. Well, there's no such thing as a free ride. I got to gut some fish. My coordinates have me on the southern coast of Newfoundland. I've been out fishing with Jeff and Darlene, and I haven't been very helpful at all. Ah! F I can make it up to them by doing one more thing. Something wonderful. Now we gotta dress our fish, we call it. We gotta gut our fish. Put your finger in the high, thumb on his tongue, and tip him back. Cut. Go down for his belly. Take the belly, throw it away. There. No problem? Well, you theoretically. One, you want me to try one more for you? You can do the rest. You can take the gut out of them. Okay. It's got to all come out, though. Yes, right? sir. It's all got to come out. Oh, yes. They got to be gutted. Before, all of these. Before you have any lunch. This is making me really hungry for lunch. This is just building up an appetite like you can't imagine. Ugh. Oh, God. This doesn't look like fun, but it is loads of fun. Oh, oh God. Oh. Oh. Come on. I'm not going to throw it. Someone's got to come get it. Oh, oh God. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. It all came out at once, finally. Hey, there was a squid in that one. Okay, I'm doing a big cod now. Ugh. This guy's organs are as big as mine. Aside from a double bill with Marilyn Manson in Denmark in 99, this is the grossest thing I've ever done. It took me 10 times longer than Jeff would have done it, but I've cleaned an entire box of cod. Uh, honestly, officer, I have an alibi. I know nothing about this fish massacre. I was nowhere in the area at the time. I swear. It's time to put our handily cleaned fish on ice. Is this an average haul that we got no, today? No, this is not a average haul. A rock star bought a fishing boat. Don't add up. Now we're pulling back into Hermitage, having pulled the nets, got the fish out of the nets, reset the nets, gutted the fish, iced the fish, and now we're heading back in. Jeff tells me we're not even halfway done. What the hell does he mean by that? How are you, sir? After we dock up, the fish is lifted out, ice removed, and the fish is weighed to see how much Jeff and Darlene get paid today. And inside the fish plant is where the rest of the work is done. The fish plant is the heart and soul of Hermitage. It feels like everyone in town works here, and everyone in here are neighbors, best friends, and family. Okay, Ed, this is Kim. Kim did it. Did. Hi. 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 Life in a remote town in Newfoundland begins and ends with work in a fish plant, where fish is cut and processed. Automatic cutting machine. This is filleting these cod. It'll do small pollock as well. Packing pails of cod that have just come out of the uh, automatic filleting machine. The fish is then inspected and packed. What I'm doing is weighing the fish here, 
I'm looking for between 5'10 and 5'20. Oh, come on. And blast frozen for shipment around the world. This thing is like the opposite of a microwave. 10 pounds of flounder. That's almost like 10 flounds a pounder. There you have it. That's how fish get from the ocean to your freezer. All done by a rock star. Have you ever been screeched in Newfoundland screeching? No. Well, we're going to do a screeching for you today and make you a honorary Newfoundlander. I'm not going to do it. This gentleman here, Conrad, is going to do it for you. How you doing, man? How you doing, my son? Good, I am good. I'm looking forward to this. Conrad is the town comedian. If anyone needs a screeching in, you want Conrad. Now, my son, i got to put on some Sunday going to meeting clothes here for okay. you. Know? You have to wear your Sunday best to drink Newfoundland's finest. It's called the Newfie Screech. Over the teeth, over the gums, look at the stomach, here she comes. Down. Mmm. And no screeching is complete wow. without kissing the cod. Oh, the very God, slimy two-day-old cod. Kiss her. Oh, God. Oh. I would like to pronounce you an honorary Newfoundlander. It has been a beautiful day in Newfoundland, in spite of all the fish. And I haven't gotten new coordinates, so I guess I'm spending another day here. It's my second day in Newfoundland. It's 7 a.m., late for a fisherman, but early for a musician. Boyd's taking me to Pools Cove to check out his business. The next big thing on the island, fish farming. Hi. Ed Robertson, Chris Williams. Good morning. How, How you doing? doing? Chris, good to meet you. You're looking forward to getting it on the water today. Yeah, absolutely. We're a little late, a little run, a little behind schedule. Okay. Fish are quite hungry. Why are you guys late? Oh, well, waiting for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry yeah, about okay. that. I'm still on rock and roll time. This, this is for you. Okay. We're off now to feed the fish. Dion, Ed, Corey. Hey, Corey. Wow, here, fishy, fishy, fishy. It's sort of like cat food with ass and not good ass. Quit f***ing around, Ed. We gotta go. Okay. Fish are starving. <laughs> Let's do it. A generation ago, these guys would be fishing the Grand Banks, but depleted fish stocks in the ocean has changed the industry. Aquaculture technology, the breeding and raising of fish in giant cages, is turning fishermen into fish farmers, and it's incredibly successful. 35 to 40,000 fish in each pen. The site that we're going on, there's 16 cages. They weren't fed that great yesterday, so today... They're going to be hungry. They're going to be hungry. In the wild, Atlantic salmon can take up to 10 years to get to 10 pounds. In one of these pens, it gets to that weight in two years. Okay, now I like to fish. It's very exciting to me to see giant salmon just jumping like crazy out of a pen. I want to get you to go with Corey here. Okay. Feed the fish, help load the hopper, do the whole thing. Okay, and now I've come with Corey onto this uh, feed barge or feed raft which I'm driving. Like today, Junior. <laughs> today, buddy. You're starving. Thanks, we need to load the blower. How much of this pallet of feed will these fish eat? They should take anywhere from 20 to 25 bags, which is about a half of that pallet. Really? These fish feed pellets are made from herring and mackerel with vitamin and coloring to make the salmon pink. At $1,000 a ton, it ain't cheap. How many bags have you put in there now? Uh, that's a very good question, Chris. Oh, this one's all keep, uh, slimy. Very, very good, uh, accurate track of the amount of feed goes in each cage to find out the FCR, which is the feed conversion ratio on the fish. That's the ratio of food you're converting into... Into flesh. Into flesh. This feed is about 70% of the total cost of a salmon operation. Wow, really? So we'll probably use in the area of 40 tons per day. So $40,000. $40,000 per day in feed alone. Up until that point, I was thinking about getting one of these tanks for myself at home. The salmon are getting very impatient. They're quite hungry. They're used to being fed at about uh, 5.30 or quarter to 6. Yes, fish, I'm sorry. Sorry I'm late. I'm usually still asleep now. You're lucky I'm making your breakfast at all. Next thing we want to do is get our camera put in the pin. Okay. We put this camera in the pin here. 
The idea of the camera is to look up from the middle of the cage. It'll see the fish swim around the top. And when the fish is done feeding, the feed should float past the fish, and we'll see it in this camera, and that'll give us an idea when to stop. Is that ever cool? That is amazing. Now with everything in place, it's time to feed the fish. This is a feed spreader, feed commander. This is the gate that lets your feed through. Okay. The more you open this, the more feed will come through. Fire it up here. Feed management is important. Too little food in the salmon don't grow. Too much in the excess food sinks to the bottom. That's wasted money. These salmon are friggin' picky. It has to be just right. Those fish are in there right now going, food just raining down. Don't put it outside the pen, that stuff is costly. Put it inside the pen, not out. OK, there's a ton of feed dropping through now. You got to stop there, though. All right, we're done feeding these fish. I don't think so. There's about 15 more pens. We're just getting started. <laughs> Quite an intricate little operation to feed a bunch of salmon. Let's see if he knows how to tie a knot. No, he don't. Tell me that's not a good knot. That is not a good knot. Just like that. Simple? It's simple if you've tied it a hundred times. Yes. I did uh, more of the cottage boat knot. <laughs> it's costing about $14,000 a day to feed these fish. Uh, and at the height of their feed schedule, up to forty thousand dollars a day. So this is going to produce three thousand tons of fat, juicy, delicious salmon, worth about eighteen million dollars. And now, with the fish fed, it's back to Pools Cove. Now you know how to feed fish. Now we're going to show you how to make the cages that we uh, we keep the fish in. Okay. And we're going to go over to another little community. Hey, another small Newfoundland town with work for me to do? Sounds great. <gasps> Welcome to the new Newfoundland, where fishing is being replaced with farming. I've spent the morning feeding the fish. Now I'm off to Boxy Newfoundland to help get one of these fish cages built. Hey, Boyd. Good afternoon, Ed. How are you? Good. Ed? Ed. Outstanding name, sir. <laughs> Welcome to Boxy. Thank you very much. This fellow is looking for some uh, some work, some physical work. So I figured you might be able to find some of that. We always got room for that. <laughs> We're uh, doing some fusions on a 150-meter cage. OK. And uh, the guys are just setting up here now, so your time is just great. We now, that's real work. big, isn't it, a 150-meter cage? 150-meter cage is the biggest cage ever built in North America. These are the first two. So what they're doing now is they're putting this into this device here, clamping it together, and they'll uh, put a heat plate in there that's at uh, 230 degrees Celsius. They'll bring it in under pressure, meld it together. And then uh, I'm going to show these guys how I pull them apart with these Southern Ontario pythons. <laughs> this is a 230 degree heating plate used to heat up the material to fuse it together. Also banned from international table tennis play in the early 60s. I could feel the heat on my face from here. So what that'll do now is the heat, as it affects the plastic, it's gonna form what we call lips. And when they get to about a quarter of an inch all the way around, we'll release the pressure. These plastic cages are super strong if fused properly. Any mistakes at this stage could cause a break in the future, releasing millions of dollars worth of fish. In aquaculture terms, that's called bad. See it roll? Yep, yep. Yeah, we're going to do the next one. Yeah. So when that closed together, did you see how it started to roll? Yeah. And then I released the pressure? Yeah. And that's what you'll do on this next one. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to fuse the You're next one? You're going to do the whole one, yeah. Oh, okay. All the guys working on this cage are former fishermen. They've had to adapt to the new financial realities of Newfoundland. It's almost a traditional lifestyle. Yeah, You're involved is. in the fisheries, but it's a, just a different fishery, right? Yeah. I'm just tightening this in for its final fusion before we push it out. I is the buy that builds the pen. He's the buy that farms it. There's another buy that blows high-powered pellets into it. And two years later, we harvest, sir. 230 degree heating plate. Now close it in on the plate. Close it in on the plate. Now we're looking for these quarter inch lips. Okay. And put it together. And watch for the roll. When you see the roll, Ed, release the pressure. 
There you go. So this pen just needs its final fusion to join the ring. We'll take the forklift and we'll push this out into the water to belly it and we'll grab the ends and bring them back around and we'll do the final fusions up here on the beach. Right. The big fear when you're pushing a cage this heavy, which this cage weighs about 24,000 pounds, is putting too much pressure in one spot and kinking it. Right. And then we'd have to start all over again, cutting a piece out, so. Can I ride the whole thing out into the bay as he pushes it out? Sure, you could. I think I should. This is the tubing I just fused together, which is making me feel a little nervous about standing on it out here. And here we go. Out to sea. There are lots of ways to help on a site like this. I've chosen to help by riding the pen out into the ocean and monitoring things from out here. And my fusion's holding up really well. Let's see, we got a 150 meter circumference. And let, what, let me think, pi r squared. Radius equals pi d. Circumference is radius. Ah, f it. Who needs to do math now? I'm a rock star. Okay, the uh, ends have been brought together at the center for one final fusion. 150 meters in uh, circumference. One of only two this large built in North America right here on this beach in boxy Newfoundland. And I fused a couple in this baby. Part of history. There you go. Part of future. Two days in Newfoundland and I was able to get a taste of the past by going fishing and a glimpse of the future in aquaculture. Boyd, thank you so much. I had a great time here in Newfoundland. The band and I have toured Newfoundland before and it's always been amazing. But these last two days, I've really experienced the lives of true Newfoundlanders. These are two days I will never forget.